Fire separation distance is how the IRC addresses fire spreading between homes. Learn about how this can affect wall construction in this clip from my on-demand course, IRC Chapter 3, Fire in 302, available only at buildingcodecollege.com. This is a continuation of the first session about fire separation distance and all the required protections and distances and details. It all starts at section 302.1, but all this section does is reference us to table 302.1, where we see the four exterior wall elements that are addressed by fire separation distance. But there are five exceptions that detail conditions that would not apply to that table exactly as it's presented. The first one is honestly a little bit useless. It just says that the wall element perpendicular to the fire separation distance line does not have to apply to the requirements. But if you remember from the previous session, in the definition, you measure at a right angle from the wall. So we already sort of knew this. I'll talk about the other exceptions as the subjects come up. Section 302.1 actually references two different tables, but which one you go to depends on this question. Are there fire sprinkler systems? Is there a system in the building? If there aren't any fire sprinklers, you use the first table. But if the building has a fire sprinkler system, you use the second table. Now I'll go over all the details of fire sprinkler system requirements found in chapter three in the last session of this course. Let's start with the first element, walls. Do they have to be fire resistance rated or not? This is a good time to bring up exception two for fire separation distance. You do not have to protect any elements between dwellings and their accessory structures on the same lot. Fire separation distance does not apply. And exception three is for tool or storage sheds like these. They are exempt from dwellings on the same lot under the previous exception I explained. But these are also exempt from fire separation distance requirements from any buildings on an adjacent lot. So both of these sheds are exempt. And this exception extends to playhouse and similar structures as well. But it only applies when the sheds and playhouses are exempt from a building permit. And that question is better answered by the local building department. The IRC provides a little guidance, but this is often amended in government during adoption. IRC allows them up to 200 square feet with no permit, but the details of this are outside the scope of this course. When fire separation distance does apply, if the face of the wall has a five foot or greater fire separation distance, then no protection whatsoever is required. But if it's less than five feet, then it must be provided a one hour fire resistance rated wall with exposure from both sides, protecting a fire in either direction. Now that rating has to be tested and proven through either ASTM E119 or through UL263. These tests allow for proprietary products and unique assemblies for fire protection to be proven and made available for the market. But you can also use any of the methods provided in the International Building Code. And one of those is prescriptive assemblies that are essentially just recipes for construction. Here's an example of a basic one hour rated wall using 5 8 inch type X drywall, just a recipe from the IBC. Now next in the table are projections. Well, I hope that clip was helpful to you. For the full on-demand course, go to buildingcodecollege.com and click the link to the course catalog. Scroll down the list of courses until you find IRC Chapter 3, Fire in 302. You can watch the first course video simply by clicking this thumbnail image. And for four months of 24-7 access to the full four-hour ICC and AIA approved course, it's only $60 and a few clicks away. 
but you can get 10% off any enrollment at buildingcodecollege.com using the coupon code YouTube.